So you've had a nice day at the zoo, you took some great photos, you come home and you decide to edit this nice tiger photo and you're so proud of the photo that you took. You share it to social media and instead of getting praise for your photo, you're seeing comments like, what is wrong with this photo? Tigers don't look like that. This is so red. It's supposed to be a more orangey color. And your mate rings up and he said, listen, Steve, you're doing it wrong. He said, you're just starting out. He said, but the colors that I'm seeing are not the colors that we took today. And you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? I'm editing my photos in Lightroom. Everything looks nice, sharing it to social media. And then your mate says, you need to calibrate your computer. The colors are wrong. Hello, I'm Charles from Charles and Photography. And today we're going to talk about calibrating your monitor. Now it's great taking photos and all that, editing them on whatever editing program you do. But another key part, if you really want to display your photos, how you want them displayed is to calibrate your monitor. Most monitors, now we're talking 80% of the monitors that you buy in the shop. Top end monitors that are designed for editing photos come pre-calibrated. But most of the photos that you buy from a shop need calibration. Now, there are two ways to calibrate. You can use a system like this, which is the Spider X system, or at the end of this video, I'll actually show you another program that you can just download. Now, this program has got limitation because it relies on you to actually visualize the amount of brightness that you're seeing and to work out the colors. But if you don't want to spend any money, I've tested this program out on my daughter's computer and it actually does a fairly good job. Not as close to what these uh, calibration systems do, but it's still better than not having your monitor calibrated at all. Let's talk about why you need to calibrate your computer. Now we've just discussed if our monitor is not calibrated, we could actually see what this image looks like on our system. But this is what other people would see. And you can see that there is a very big difference. So this is why we need a calibration system. And there's a few different types of software that you can buy from X-Rite or Datacolor. They all do the similar thing. And if I open this one up, and we'll actually go through and I'll show you how we actually calibrate a system. But they basically work on a puck system. And they're attached to the computer. So this is the puck. And it actually just sits on the computer like this when you actually bring up the calibration software. Now, it's recommended that at least once a month you actually calibrate the computer. Because even though our LCD screens live much longer, over time they actually fade just slightly. So calibrating your monitor once a month actually keeps the computer in check. So that you know that as you're going along that the colors are going to be represented correctly. Now this is especially important if you are doing work for other people. If you have clients that are actually buying your photos. Now there's nothing worse than printing a photo for a client, getting it back home and you're seeing that the image is totally wrong or actually sending the files to a client and then hearing them complain that the colors are all wrong. So if you're doing this as a business, you definitely want to be calibrating. But even if you're doing this for a hobby and you're sincere in displaying your photos correctly, then definitely get your system calibrated. Because it doesn't matter if their system's not calibrated, but for everybody else that has a system that is calibrated, they will actually be able to see your image like you've intended. So we calibrate our monitor so that the images look very similar to what we're seeing and to what other people are seeing. And when we're printing photos, even if we're printing photos just for ourselves, we know that what we're going to get from the print shop is going to be very close to what we're seeing on our computer. This puck is around four years old and it doesn't matter how old it is because it still does the job. Now I've been using the spider system for around 10 years. It's never let me down. This one is just about due for an upgrade to the new spider X system, but it still does the same thing. Now 
when you're just starting out you don't want to spend a lot of money so in the links below I'll actually be linking down to some of the startup kits and these are the cheapest kits that you can get they range from around two to three hundred and fifty odd dollars today we're just going to be talking about the people who are just starting out and they just want to make sure that their photos look right on their screens and on the majority of screens and to the majority of people that are seeing their images so now I'll actually show you how to actually use this system and we're using the spider system so I have to plug in this the spider system into my USB into a USB port there now I bring up on the computer the spider software and you can actually see it on the computer as well and it tells me I've got to give it time for the computer to warm up normally even with LCD screens a good 10-15 minutes before you actually decide to calibrate the system so it lists through the the setup your warm-up the lighting conditions this is something that is also very important the lighting I don't have any windows in my office I've got a fluoro light above me but if you've got a big window that's letting in a lot of light then put curtains over it because if you're calibrating your system with that light there that means at night time when you go to edit your photos the light will actually be different so your photos will actually look different to what they would do if that light was there so normally if you've got cur if you've got windows with a lot of light then cover it and put on your interior light so that means that you can work daytime and nighttime everything is ready so we click next and now it asks me do I have an LCD screen a laptop or a CRT screen I have an LCD screen so it's ticked I click next and now it's showing me put the puck in this area so it has a counterweight so it actually sits at the back now for my system I just have to tilt it slightly back so it actually sits correctly on the unit it's on a slight angle but it's still in that area all I have to do now is click next and you will see that there'll be reds greens blues and this is how it actually sets your color profile for your computer so we click next and here we go you can actually see it's saying measuring this display so it's measuring whites then in measuring blacks then it's all the tonal range that it's actually going to be measuring because as it's doing this the little light is blinking but it's measuring the ambient light as well and this is the big difference between this system and the software that I'll show you at the end of this where we're actually just adjusting the colors on the screen so there we have it the system is calibrated it's saying measuring complete please remove your spider and click finish so this is what we're going to do so we take it off the system I'll just put it on the side here bring it back square for myself unplug the system from the computer and we click finish so when my system finishes calibrating it actually pops up this screen and it shows you the difference and it's saying you can preview between the uncalibrated monitor and the calibrated monitor so this is the calibrated version and if we switch this is the uncalibrated view so you can see there is a vast difference and my monitor here is like in the upper range of computer monitors it's designed for editing photos and all that but it still needs calibration now that we're finished we just click next and it comes up saying your new profile has been created and it actually sits in the startup menu so when the computer starts up the calibration kicks in and you're seeing true colors all the time so we click finish now all these systems work slightly differently but what they do state is that you have to adjust your brightness and your contrast on your monitor there are so many different monitors that it would be very hard for me to explain this in this video but if you read in the instruction manual of your calibration software it will actually tell you how to do this and where to set the brightness because most monitors 
come with a brightness level of between 80 to 100 percent and my monitor actually sits at around 70 percent because it cannot be too bright so it actually tells you you have to bring the brightness down to a certain level for the calibration program to work properly now i will actually show you this free software that you can use and how to actually use it now i will actually show you this free software that you can use and how to actually use it the software is called calibrize and it's totally free so let's take a look at it now so this is the software calibrize click yes now it goes just click yes so we just click next we accept the agreement click next and this is just where it's going to install we click next next i just want desktop icon next install that's it very quick now we launch it and here it just asks you a few questions how often do you want it to remind you to calibrate so you've got two days a week two weeks or a month i would just choose one month and we click next so here you can actually see it says contrast and brightness settings first set the contrast of your monitor to the maximum level then adjust the brightness control so that the black circle is barely visible next adjust the brightness control so that the black circle is barely visible while the dark background appears as one solid color then make sure that the circle is visible by readjusting the contrast so we can see that the white is barely visible and our black here I know it's very hard to tell but on the screen here I can just see that it's just visible but on your system if you're running this the first time you will see a very big difference because you have to understand we just calibrated my system so now we click next and here it comes up with your three primary colors red green blue RGB and you can see here again what it states is adjust the slider so that the colors actually blend for example if I just slide this red you can see it's actually adjusting the rest of my screen as well can you see like if I'm sliding this it's going from like gray to a pinkish color and the idea is that you're sliding so that the inner circle and the outer area look very similar and if I do it to the blue you can see it just has to match and this is the most simple way of doing this but I'm not going to go any further than this because my system is calibrated but all you have to do now is from this we just click next and it will actually do just like my calibration software it will write a profile and put it into your start box so that when your computer boots up it actually reads this profile and says this is the colors you need so i hope now that you have a better understanding of how to actually attain photos that look correct on your screen and also when you're sharing that other people will actually see the same sort of colors now there is so many millions of computers around the world that your photo will very rarely be seen exactly the same has on your screen but it will get it very close because it's one thing to take great photos and everybody likes to take nice photos but it is so disappointing when you share your photos and then you hear comments or people tell you well the photos that you're sharing are not what they should look like or if you take a photo and you get it printed you're so excited about this beautiful photo to have taken and when you're actually seeing the print it is just totally wrong so if this video has been helpful for you give me a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube subscribe to my youtube channel and so the software that i just shared calibrize i'll actually put a link in the description box below where you can actually download this software and use it for yourself and also the links to the software systems for the pucks that you can actually buy and you can just search wherever you want to buy these now if this video has been helpful to you give me a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel 
you have any comments or questions or if there's a photography topic that you'd like me to discuss leave it in the comment box below. I'm Charles for Charles in Photography. See you next time.